We've outgrown all of the poultry housing available on our homestead, so today we're gonna build some more. Come on. You can see behind me, we have two brooders full of chickens right now. We have about 60 chickens between the two. So there's about 30 in each of them and they're definitely outgrowing their space very quickly. These guys need to go ahead and get on pasture. Like I said, just a moment ago, we have reached capacity in all of our tractors. So we need to go ahead and make some more space for these guys so that they can go on pasture. Now, if you're anything like us, we need to pivot from plan to plan sometimes on our homestead because not everything always works out. We do have some broilers that are out on pasture right now and their butcher day is supposed to be a week from now. We do feel like they need to grow out a little bit more before we go ahead and butcher. And that tractor that they're currently in was the tractor that we were gonna go ahead and put our chicks out into and just go ahead and uh, cycle that out. But since they do need an extra week, we're gonna go ahead and build an extra tractor so that these guys have plenty of space to go ahead and go into pasture and we can have all of them on, on pasture at the same time. You might be able to see out behind me that we also have turkeys here on pasture. They're currently in a meat chicken tractor, which is totally fine. They have plenty of space uh, for how many there are. We have 20 in there and they have plenty of space to roam around and go ahead and forage on the pasture. I do feel like, however, they need a little bit more uh, space height-wise in the tractor because whenever they stretch out their necks, they're right at uh, the top and I, I feel like they might need a little bit more space. So today, instead of making uh, the same kind of build here that we have for our meat chicken tractors, we're gonna go ahead and make one that has a little bit more space on the top. We're gonna go ahead and put a door in there so whenever we're doing chores, we can just open that up and change out their feed and water and also have the ability to move it so that they can constantly get new pasture every day. Now, as a homeschooling mama, I always like to take um, learning experiences from our homestead and implement it into our homeschool. So today, our children are finishing up their independent studies, and then they're going to be involved in this build. They're going to be involved in everything in this project, from budgeting to going and shopping for the items and uh, actually building. So we actually do have some of the materials here on our homestead because we always like to uh, use what we have, right? Use what you have to make everything possible here on your homestead. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and use those materials, but they're also going to go with me to the local hardware store to pick up all of the items. And uh, we're going to try to do this within a $100 to $150 budget. So they'll be involved in that project. And then they'll also be involved in using the tools and all the fun things. Our boys especially will go out and enjoy that. Uh, but it's just a really great way to be able to uh, do this project with your kids, get them involved and have them learn in the process as well. Having them involved in this project today is not only going to be a learning experience for them in their homeschool, but also it's going to be such a help today for me because my hubby is not here. Uh, he is normally my partner that we do everything together. We love to uh, do projects here on our homestead, but it is going to be so great to have them involved in this project and help me out today. Okay, we just got back from town. We were running around. We actually were going to go to the harbor, uh, to the hardware store, but we actually we had to go to Tractor Supply for something, so we got everything from there. We actually decided to go ahead and make two of these tractors, one for the turkeys and one for the ducks. Uh, since we're gonna have all of the materials out anyway, we do need to go ahead and take care of the ducks as well. So we're just gonna go ahead and make two. Two is better than one. And especially if you're gonna go ahead and do a project, uh, get as much out of it as you possibly can. So I will be working on one. The kids are gonna have their own that I will obviously help them with um, and kind of supervise and give them the materials that they need. But this is going to be their project and their learning uh, for the day. So I'm going to go ahead and get started by grabbing all of the materials over by the barn that we already currently have. Uh, we're going to be working with mostly two by fours for the frame. And for the door, I think we're going to go ahead and rip down the two by fours to two by twos. That way we're going to go ahead and save on material and then also save on the weight. As we move it, we want it to be as little weight as possible. So that will cut down on the weight there. So let's go ahead and get started. If you know from when we did our hog panels for our hog shelter, we have a few extra here. So we're going to go ahead and use these hog panels for the tractor. You can also use uh, cattle panels if you want, but this is what we have on hand. So that's what we're going to go ahead and use. I mentioned a bit ago that we are making a second tractor here uh, for our ducks and we currently have them in a meat chicken type tractor with the laying hens while we continue to build our ultimate laying hen tractor from an old trailer. And if you haven't taken a look at that video, definitely head over after this video and watch the build. Uh, we're super excited to go ahead and get them in there and it's a really neat transformation. So go ahead and head over there. But anyway, we 
uh, had them in this tractor and they're pretty crowded in there. They it worked out wonderfully. Uh, in the meantime, while we're building this other tractor for them, and while there were ducklings and chicks, it really uh, was fine. Now, though, that they're kind of growing, they're definitely overcrowded in there. We have way too many ducks along with the hens, and we always want to be authentic with you guys and share the exciting parts of homesteading, but also the sad parts and the frustrating and, and harder times as well. And with this, uh, we actually have lost a few of our laying hens due to the fact that they're just way overcrowded in there. The ducks were trampling the chickens. And so that is why we have definitely prioritized this project over others in our homestead, just because we want to make sure that we're taking care of the animals that we currently have. The reason we chose this design in our tractor is because it's fairly versatile. As I mentioned, we're going to go ahead and keep our turkeys and our ducks in there, but we can also use it for quail as well. If you've been around for a while, you know that we raise pasture-raised quail, and we do plan on keeping them on pasture. So we can go ahead and use this for our quail as well. Whenever we have butcher day for our turkeys, we can go ahead and swap it out. But having the ability to go ahead and continue to swap out animals uh, as we raise them on our homestead is definitely important. We don't want to uh, be in a situation where we're building something for one specific animal and it's not able to be used for another. If you're raising quail on your homestead, you need to either make sure that your tractor is either a foot tall so that they can't fly or six feet tall so that if they do fly, they're not uh, flying up and breaking their neck. This tractor is about six feet tall or a little bit more, uh, so they have plenty of space to fly around in there if they want to. With this project today, I actually figured that we would go ahead and uh, use staples to secure down the hog panels, but I want to make sure that um, if we ever needed it for something else, that we could go ahead and take these hog panels off really easily. So I went ahead and used plates. Now these plates we actually used uh, in a garden bed in our old homestead to join two pieces of wood together so that we can do a raised bed. Um, we did have 10 of these left over and that's great because we had eight, we needed eight of them, but I only have two left and I need to do the other tractor. So I'll have to go to uh, Lowe's tomorrow to go ahead and buy some more of these. I really forgot how much these were, so I'll definitely pay attention to that so that we can budget wise figure out um, how much this thing is going to cost us. But um, we had these left over, so we're going to go ahead and use these. Now, um, because these hog panels are pretty they're no joke. They're they're very big. They um, just can be pretty dangerous whenever you're putting them up. So I went ahead and used the ladder to help me put them up since I don't have my husband uh, available today. Um, and I didn't want the kids to be involved in that because it really is pretty dangerous. If they get um, around that or run around it, uh, they can really skirt themselves up. So I had them involved by putting these brackets in and securing them down for me. Um, so they weren't involved in actually putting up the hog panels as much as what I wanted them to be, but that's okay because we're actually going to go ahead and put that chicken wire up and around those uh, hog panels right now. And the way I'm going to go ahead and secure it down is just through zip ties and they love doing this. This is a great way to get kittens involved. Um, these are heavy duty, probably a little bit more than what we actually need for the project, but that's all that they had at Tractor Supply today. So um, they're going to go ahead and help me secure down this uh, chicken wire. In lieu of using zip ties, you can use metal cable ties or metal grommets, but we chose to use the zip ties not only because the children are able to put them up easily, but also because we can take this tractor apart if we need to. Hog panels are wonderful to have on a homestead. They're very versatile. We've actually used them in our garden to create a nice arch. Uh, you can use them in in-ground gardening or raised bed gardening, but it's a great way of using a vertical space for your, your garden. We've grown pumpkins and other squash. Uh, you can use them for cucumbers and tomatoes. So they're wonderful to have in a garden. But not only that, but obviously you can keep hogs in a pen, but we're currently using them to train our puppies as well. We have them surrounding our uh, dog house and they're able to go out into the grass and have some space to roam around in. So this creates a, a nice pen for them. So hog panels are wonderful to have and if we ever need to go ahead and take this tractor apart, we're able to reuse those in other spaces in our homestead. At this point in our build, we have most of the chicken wire on. Obviously there's a few spots here that we need to go ahead and fill in, but I wanted to go ahead and show you the frame that we have going on. Uh, we do have some beams on the inside of the tractor just so that it gives it some stability. 
We also have those braces in the front so that it doesn't waver from side to side and that gives it plenty of structure. Uh, we do have our hardware on, but I'm just showing you the inside and how everything is laid out here. This build is nothing too crazy or technical. Uh, obviously, we took a little bit longer because we're using this as a homeschool project and there's learning involved, but you could probably do this project in, within one afternoon. We were able to complete it uh, going to Lowe's, getting all of the materials within two days. I am cutting all of the pieces off of the zip ties just with a regular pair of scissors. I was gonna go ahead and use the same shears that I was using for the chicken wire, but I definitely don't wanna accidentally uh, cut the chicken wire that I would work so hard on putting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, take all of these pieces off. And mamas, if you have ever decorated Christmas trees with a toddler or a preschooler, you know what I'm talking about right now. Ready? All right, so this, this right here, this is equivalent to your Christmas tree during Christmas season. Zip ties galore. We have them all in the same spot. I just think that's so funny because during Christmas season, you always have the same kind of ornaments. You're trying to space it throughout your uh, entire Christmas tree and you tend to have, you know, bulbs all in one spot. So this is my Christmas tree for our homestead. You can see here I'm finishing off by putting a rope through, but we're also going to be adding a tarp to it so that our turkeys can stay nice and warm and stay out of any kind of rain that might come through. I'm super excited to go ahead and get the turkeys into their new uh, housing so that they have a little bit more space. Obviously, we're going to go ahead and get those chicks out of their brooders and bring them out on pasture where they belong as well. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my kiddos to help me load them up. <laughs> Okay, so our turkeys are nice and happy. They're already pecking at pasture. We're gonna go ahead and load this thing up and uh, it's nice to see that they have a little bit more head space in there. So like I assumed, I actually thought maybe I can go ahead and move this thing, but with three hog panels on this thing, it is just not gonna be possible for me to move it without any kind of help. So I did put the rope on there. We're gonna go ahead and use uh, our ATV or a lawnmower, our truck, something to go ahead and move this each day. We do have an ATV that I assumed that we were probably gonna have to do. I thought maybe I can go ahead and get it, but it's just not possible. So if you're looking for something that is not as heavy, definitely um, the chicken tractors that we currently have them in is a lot easier just to move. I can move them by myself doing chores, but this one I'm definitely gonna need some help and a little bit of power. All right, now that the ducks and the turkeys are all set in their new tractors, we can go ahead and put these little guys out on pasture for the first time. Don't forget that as you are growing out your broilers, you can do them in successions just like you can uh, plant in succession in your garden. Uh, this is a great way to utilize just one of your tractors in multiple uh, batches and fill your freezer for the winter. Thank you so much for watching our build today, friends. We definitely appreciate you being around. If you haven't, definitely subscribe to our channel. We have lots of projects that we're super excited to share with you. Also, comment below. Do you think that that tractor will help out our turkeys to have a little bit more space? Let us know. As for now, guys, have a blessed day. Uh -huh.